Nita Quayle, welcome to Australian Musician. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm just wondering, what was the spark that uh, led to you wanting to make music in the first place? Um, what was the spark that led me to want to play music in the first place? I so I'm I'm from Tasmania, Hobart originally, and my mother used to take me as a four-year-old um, to see the Tasmanian Symphony Orchestra Sunday afternoon free concerts that they would put on. Um, and so she would take me um, most months and um, I was fascinated and drawn to the lead cellist, uh, Sue Ellen Paulson, who I believe is still the principal cellist today. Um, so she had this mannerism about her and this, you know, huge smile. She really looked like she enjoyed what she was doing, had these beautiful ball gowns on and um, I just thought what an awesome thing to want to do with your life. So, I mean, she was the direct, I think, influence for me wanting to play the cello. Um, but I think it was my mother's influence of taking me to see these concerts that really put the spark of, of music um, into me. So, yeah. So did you take music lessons at school? I took, yeah, I took one-on-one uh, -on -one cello lessons from the age of 12 um, in high school. Um, I had the opportunity to, to start learning the cello in high school as the, the high school I went to would lend out instruments. So obviously my, my family could never afford to, to buy one for me. Um, in those sort of formative years of figuring out whether or not I'm actually going to keep on with the instrument. So um, I started cello lessons uh, in year seven, um, but before then I started on piano at the age of seven. Um, so I did that for sort of three or four years, um, which was great. I was able to transfer a lot of that musicality and um, sort of technical now, I guess, onto the instrument, onto, onto the cello too. So I was able to speed things up a bit um, in the learning process. So yeah. And who are some of the artists that have inspired you into making the kind of music that you make now? Um, Zoe Keating, I think, was a huge influence on um, bringing the cello into a, a real contemporary space. Um, She's sort of, she's an incredible American um, cellist who sort of fuses um, technology with, with live looping and um, so she's, she's a, an, an astonishing um, musician and advocate for putting the cello into um, contemporary spaces and, and performance spaces, yeah. Uh, you studied music at VCA and then later at NMIT. Uh, how important has that been in obtaining the variety of, variety of work that you've gained? Yeah, um, I think my VCA days were, I guess, pretty integral for keeping myself and the instrument abreast of technical ability. Um, I think NMIT was probably which I, I went to probably 10 years later. So I took a, a long break and then went back because I thought I really need to know more about um, jazz theory and, and harmony and being able to take the cello in that sense into a more contemporary space and to be able to play with others that have, um, you know, such a diverse but really thorough musical knowledge and background. So, um, yeah, I would say um, NMIT was probably the most influential, I think, in helping me to stay grounded and afoot for being able to, to play and, and connect with others on a musical level. Yeah. So when you look back over the last couple of decades, uh, what are the more memorable collaborations you've been involved with? Um, I would have to say probably my first um, experience in a live sense would have been with Chris Wilson and the Crown of Thorns. Um, yeah, I was very, very fortunate to be able to, to join his, his group when I was, I think I was 20 at the time. Um, and I hadn't had a lot of improvisational experience at that stage. So um, I would think I was with them for about 18 months and we, we did tours up to the Byron Bay Festival and Blues and Roots and 
a um, whole heap of stuff and some television appearances and it was such a huge learning experience for me. Um, and I think if I didn't have that experience, I probably, I certainly wouldn't be where I am today. So um, that would be one of them. The other, which the other um, experience for me, which is an ongoing project that I, I'm working with a, a violinist here in Melbourne called Zanny Kolak. And we have, um, we have a group together called Melbourne Amplified Strings. Um, and that's been an incredible learning curve and experience in not only being able to play um, different genres of music with our guest collaborators that we have for every concert, um, but it's also been a chance to really know how to write better for strings because we, we, we compose all of the material ourselves and then we arrange it and then we put on these concerts. So it's a huge undertaking each concert um, and the processes involved are quite detailed and um, takes a lot of time but yeah uh, in saying that it's it's been such a, a wonderful learning experience for me and a, as a result keeps me <laughs> keeps me abreast and kind of confident to be able to keep collaborating with other people too. Uh, your current project is Beyond the Lake. Uh, yeah. How did that come about? Um, I guess like many other projects um, that have just started during COVID when we had <laughs> nothing else to do. <laughs> um, so we, it, it began in, in, in lockdown in I think 2020. Um, and we started just to kind of amuse ourselves and to, you know, to um, make ourselves feel relaxed. We started um, just playing um, here in the studio. Um, these sort of long form, slow moving, sort of um, uh, ethereal type improvisations. And we, what we noticed was it was really calming and relaxing for us, um, which is what we needed because it was a pretty anxious time. Um, so we thought, well, why don't we, why don't we start um, doing some live stream performances once a week and maybe other people might want to join in and listen and it might help to relieve their anxiety as well. And, so that was 2020. We did over 50 live streams um, over the course of about a year and a half. Um, and then we thought, well, why don't we develop this material further? So we did. So we went back on um, all of the live streams that we did and really went through with a fine tooth comb to see, you know, where, where were the great melodies and where were those great chord progressions? And um, yeah, we started to really um, dive deep into creating some um, fully composed pieces of music, so um, which we are glad to <laughs> announce that we, we will be releasing on the 28th of April this year. Uh, and you're also doing a launch? Yes, we're album. doing a launch um, at the Toff in town. Um, and we're, having, we're very lucky to have with us a special guest um, artist, Mindy Mangwang, who is uh, Music Victoria's Musician of the Year for 2021. So she's kindly offered to um, open the night for us. Um, and yeah. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about your gear now. Mm. Um, the beautiful cello that you're holding, what is it and where did you get it? So it is called, its, its technical name is the SV110 Silent Electric Cello from, from Yamaha. Um, so I bought this uh, during one of the lockdowns, can't remember which one. So I've had it for maybe 18 months, so it hasn't been a, a long relationship yet. Um, and I bought it from uh, Oswinds in Moreland Road in Coburg. So it's probably one of the very few places in Melbourne music shops that actually is, is stocking these, these electric cellos. Yeah. Um, and how, how do you amplify an instrument like that? Yeah, so it's, um, it's got the pickup um, system inbuilt into the back of the instrument. Um, there are a couple of different functions here that you can use either a dry signal or you can use their built-in reverbs as well, which, which is fun. Um, there's also a spot to actually be able to plug in um, headphones. So you can actually 
you know, the whole idea about this instrument is that you can you can practice silently um, and not 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 disrupt your housemates or whatever. So um, so it's it, it has that function as well, and it also has um, a send out to be able to um, incorporate other effects units and things like that. So um, yeah. Um, and tell me about the effects unit that you use with it. Yeah. So I um, I use the Headrush um, pedal board. So it was. I guess originally designed for guitars and basses, um, but the beauty about this particular pedal board is that it has um, a very flexible inbuilt EQ system in its in its back end. So you're able to really sculpt the the sounds of of, of particular instruments to really make those sort of sounds true and and come out a lot more. So I've done some incredible recording sessions here at home also on my acoustic cello and a lot of the time what people will ask me to do is to record cello viola and and violin as a string quartet or a string trio um, so what I've been able to do is actually create um, patches for those particular sounds so you can sort of sculpt the, the, the sound for a cello you can sculpt it for a viola um, get more of the mids happening you can sculpt it for a violin sound as well, so more of the higher higher end spectrum comes out in the in the EQs when you sculpt that. So it's a super super flexible um, pedal board. Um, so and it's you know it works beautifully with with the the Yamaha electric. <laughs> Apart from the Beyond the Lake uh, project, what, what else is on for the rest of 2022? Um, yeah, we, I'm currently in uh, the works with um, Lamine Sonko, who is a collaborator, composer and chora player from Senegal. Um, so we are working on a project with music, with um, sound design, with visuals, with dance. Um, that's going to be premiering next year, 2023, sometime. Um, so we're we're currently in the, in the development stages with that now. So um, fusing um, South African uh, culture and rhythms and music, and sort of fusing it with a, a Western perspective with sound as well. So that's going to be really something to keep an eye out for and, and watch out for. Um, I also have a, a project with uh, Mindy Mengwang coming up uh, and Daniel Janach. So he's a, he's a computer programmer. Um, so he uses a lot of stuff with Ableton um, to create these sort of sound beds, sound design beds. So, um, so we're doing a premiering a, a, a new work um, at the South Frankston Festival happening in May. And then we hope to take that um, into the uh, the Oz Asia Festival, um, following from that. Um, so there's that in the works. Um, there is also Melbourne Amplified Strings have a concert in May, coming up with our guest collaborator. This time will be um, Andrea Keller, 
um, and that will be happening at Balura House down on the Mornington Peninsula. So that will be a lovely project. Um, we're taking some of the poems that um, Zanny had asked her followers to, to write down about their feelings of COVID and perhaps hopes for, for the future. Um, and we're putting those poems to music. So um, that will be a really lovely concert to come and be a part of as well. Um, there are some other things that come that don't come to mind, but now for, for, for the next six months, I think that's that's enough. <laughs> uh, once the Beyond the Lake album is out, uh, where can people uh, purchase a copy? Uh, we encourage people to purchase from Bandcamp. I um, believe it's, it is the most ethic, ethical um, place to buy and consume your music. Um, so we certainly um, would, would want you to do that. Buy it, buy it on Bandcamp. You can also stream, um, stream the album on um, Spotify and Apple Music and all the rest. So um, yeah, so I think we will also have t-shirts as well by that stage too. So if you want to be on the lake t-shirt, get one of those too. All right, Anita Quayle, thanks for your time. Very welcome, Greg. Thanks for having me.